True or false, you, Brian Johnson, at some point, you will die. False. Sure, it sounds like science fiction, but soon enough, we might all be living forever. Thanks to a space-age technology called CRISPR, DNA alteration in humans has leapt from science fiction to science reality. With this technology, bioengineers are able to edit genes to produce a response that either resolves a disease or strengthens the immune system to fight disease more successfully. CRISPR stands for Clustered Regularly Interspaced Short Palindromic Repeats, and scientists first discovered it in microbes like bacteria, where it works as an immune defense against viral attacks. The microbes utilized CRISPR to adopt DNA from the virus so that it could be recognized later and used to prevent subsequent infections. This is pretty similar to what the human immune system naturally does to establish immunity. With CRISPR in the Immortality Toolbox, mutated genes that would otherwise run rampant can instead be repaired. This can potentially help with diseases that are passed down through generations. The mechanism can also control defective genes in the fight against diseases like cancer. The way it works is that a patient's own immune response is bolstered by introducing engineered T cells that attack tumor cells more ferociously. And it's not just cancer, as similar targeting can also be utilized for other diseases like sickle cell anemia. Have you been anxiously awaiting medical therapies that zero in on offending genes to fix the basic wiring of human physiology? Well, they already exist, and they're giving cancer patients a fighting chance at longer lives. Tech monarchs in Silicon Valley are investing heavily in the concept of super longevity, which utilizes gene therapy to program human DNA to defy aging and cure chronic illnesses. Rather than simply making life last longer, these therapies aim to make our golden years healthier and more worthwhile. The FDA has already approved gene therapies for several diseases, and clinical trials are underway for others. If everything goes according to plan, genetic intervention to reverse and reconfigure abnormalities could legitimately provide an extended lifeline for many patients who would have otherwise died young. There are risks, however, such as undesirable immune responses, infections, and genetic errors. Continued development will hopefully iron out the wrinkles, though, and help make targeted gene therapy a staple of life extension in the future. One of the biggest breakthroughs in recent medical science is the use of mRNA, or messenger RNA, to develop vaccines. This molecule was discovered back in the 1960s, but it wasn't until the COVID-19 pandemic that mRNA vaccines were fully realized and brought to market. So what's next for mRNA-based serums? In addition to providing protection from viral infections, mRNA has the potential to be a scientific miracle that fights some of the biggest diseases in the world. It could even be used to develop a universal vaccine that could theoretically knock out essentially any cancer when paired with immune checkpoint inhibitors, which are anti-cancer drugs that are already commonly used. A world on the cusp of such a vaccine is one that's peering across the void of immortality and seeing light on the other side. I would like to be optimistic that RNA technology is going to uh, uh, stay. It's no surprise that nutrition plays a big part when it comes to immortality. There's a slew of information that taps into the thrill of eating for health and achieving longevity with nutrition. Basically, it's one of the simplest tactics for giving yourself a chance at a long, healthy life. In addition to the obvious benefits of a healthy diet, a method of calorie restriction has proven successful in extending lifespans. The trick is to avoid malnourishment while using the body's own metabolism to stimulate cell repair and minimize damage. There's also an element of staving off age-related diseases that makes the possibilities even more thrilling. More research is needed to better understand the dynamics and potential outcomes, though. But the prospect of using nutritional mechanisms to extend life is one of the more exciting and accessible possibilities for immortality. Yeah. It's just a matter of making the math work. Biohacking has become a buzzword in the world of immortality studies thanks to developments that maximize the body's own mechanisms to minimize and undo damage. No single person embodies the concept of biohacking more than billionaire Brian Johnson, whose efforts to turn back the biological clock include sleep manipulation and transfusions. He spent $2 million in his pursuit of immortality, the results of which have kept him looking fit and youthful into his late 40s. But he's aiming for much more than that, with a goal to live until the year 2140. But of course, not all of us are billionaires like Johnson. There are simple practices that don't require endless amounts of cash or cutting-edge technology, though. These include getting adequate sleep, eating a plant-heavy diet, minimizing stress, and avoiding alcohol. While not as sexy as sleeping in a hyperbaric chamber or having your blood replaced periodically, they're easy to incorporate into your daily routine and a simple start toward your own personal immortality. Imagine microscopic robots coursing through your bloodstream, racing to repair your body and keep you alive for as long as you desire. Futurist Ray Kurzweil is convinced that these nanobots are essential to the concept of human immortality. 
He dives deep into the subject in his book, The Singularity is Nearer, as he details the need for these minuscule machines to rid the body of cell damage that causes aging, deterioration, and eventually death. How would such a process work? With guidance from artificial intelligence, which would provide the superior transhuman intelligence required to put the process into effect. Kurzweil predicts that as early as the 2030s, nanobot maintenance of the human body will bring about a form of immortality that merges man and machine. Are there already animals that experience a form of immortality? If so, can we humans tap into their magic? Indeed, scientists have turned their microscopes towards these creatures to learn about their secrets of longevity. For example, a species of jellyfish known as Turritopsis dorni is able to turn back its biological clock to any stage of its own lifespan. If the possibility of eliminating death depends on decrypting the DNA of our fellow creatures, how far into the animal kingdom will science need to reach? Stephen Austad, a biology professor at the University of Alabama at Birmingham, studies aging in different animals to unlock the secrets of what makes some species age quicker than others, and what keeps some from aging at all. One thing he's discovered is that size matters, as he told NPR in 2020. If you actually look at a whole bunch of animals, it turns out that smaller ones actually have more heartbeats and use more energy over the course of a lifetime than large ones. This insight has been instrumental in determining how gene manipulation can give humans a similar anti-aging advantage. Telomeres are a humble but important part of the human body. They're the caps at the end of chromosomes that prevent damage to DNA. The extension and preservation of telomeres has been identified as a method for keeping the cellular aging process at bay. This is a promising direction for eternal life that gets to the root of what causes otherwise healthy bodies to break down in the first place. Believe it or not, experiments have proven that telomeres can be manipulated to grow back in cell cultures. Even more encouraging are discoveries that lifestyle changes like adopting a plant-based diet, reducing stress, and engaging in moderate exercise can help maintain telomeres and give us a legitimate chance at a longer life. But telomere lengthening isn't without its risks. According to Mary Armanios, an oncology professor at Johns Hopkins University who conducted a two-year study of telomere length and tumor development, cells with very long telomeres accumulate mutations and appear to promote tumors and other types of growths that would otherwise be put in check by normal telomere shortening processes. Now we know that telomere uh, shortening causes a DNA damage response and causes cells to either senesce or die. So, while the concept is promising, the reality of telomeres as they relate to longevity is complex and requires more research. If you're into immortality, chances are you've heard about Walt Disney's head being frozen in a tank, quietly waiting to be resurrected in the future. What's in here? Oh, you don't need to see that! Disney! I told you not to look! If that's your understanding of cryonics, then you've probably dismissed it as a wacky Frankenstein-style fever dream. But the reality is that this form of physical preservation is an actual industry that's been in motion for quite some time. For those who believe in its potential, it's a concept that holds great promise, though the execution is yet to fully live up to that promise. The cryonics movement was launched in the 1960s by Robert Ettinger. It was based on the notion that if you could suspend animation in a human being, you could keep a body in limbo until a future time when fatal conditions could be cured, and the body would be reanimated and healed. And yes, the process often involves decapitation, though the details are much more intricate than that. Nowadays, there are companies like Alcor that employ cryonic technicians and actively offer cryonic suspension for anyone with faith in an eventual forever future. Cryonics I like to think of as simply an extension of emergency medicine. What if you could replace your failing organs without needing to find a donor? That's the promise at the heart of 3D organ printing technology, an intriguing development that produces the biological hardware required to extend human life. It works by using a patient's own cells from small bits of tissue extracted by a needle biopsy or a minor surgical procedure. As Dr. Anthony Atala, director of Wake Forest Institute for Regenerative Medicine, told CNN in 2023, by taking a small piece of tissue, we are able to tease cells apart and we grow and expand the cells outside the body. Basically, the technology, what it does is it allows us to create human-scale constructs that we can implant into patients. This could theoretically reduce the need for donors and reduce the risk of our bodies rejecting replacement organs. But like many immortality efforts, this process may only be available to elite patients who can afford it. Simply put, for the foreseeable future, there's no getting around the fact that organ printing will be a costly endeavor. What if immortality didn't mean an unending physical existence? Instead, there's a very real possibility that soon we'll be able to upload our consciousnesses to digital storage for a virtual version of immortality. That's the goal for tech startup Nectome, a company created by a pair of MIT graduates for the purpose of producing neural mappings that can be stored as cloud-based representations of the human mind. 
It might sound like a Black Mirror episode, but it's becoming closer to reality every day. Imagine not needing a body or even a brain to continue living. Someday, your descendants may be able to interact with your computerized avatar, engaging with a version of you that exists as an AI-based collection of your thoughts, memories, and feelings. There are already programs that replicate speech patterns of the deceased and allow loved ones to communicate with the dead. It now appears to only be a matter of time before digitized brainwaves will provide code-based immortality. To all the parents and future parents out there, do you ever wish you could choose your baby's eye color, hair color, height, and other physical attributes, or even engineer them for longer lifespans? Cutting Edge Science offers the possibility of creating designer babies with built-in immortality, thanks to customized genetic compositions that theoretically let humans sidestep their inevitable decline. Science already has the ability to manufacture chromosomes, so composing the genetic structures of children who won't succumb to disease or degeneration is a logical next step. But, as you might expect, the ethical conundrum of genetically engineered embryos is already a fierce subject of conversation in the legal and scientific communities. In 2018, Chinese scientists He Zhenkui declared that twin embryos edited using CRISPR had resulted in the first genetically engineered babies. The goal was to give the children resistance to the HIV virus, which was present in their father. But the implications sent shockwaves around the world and got us even closer to the promise of manufactured immortality.